Okay, now we come to Daniel 9, and frankly, I'm only going to be able to give you the barest highlights about how his poem works. You're going to have to look at the document that's in the video description. It's extremely long. It goes through syllable by syllable, cross-referencing everything Daniel says to the particular king he's talking about and the Bible verses that cross-reference it so that you can see his sarcasm. Okay, he's using a lot of sarcasm. And of course, you know, on the surface, this looks like a very repetitive prayer. And uh, frankly, I didn't want to study it, but the Holy Spirit kept bugging me to do it. He kept saying, it's metered. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to know this. So, you know, mea maxima culpa. Um, the videos on this in part are in Psalm 90 playlist but it's best to just download the document that will be in the video description here and there um, and just read it through because when you see the sarcasm you'll begin to understand and appreciate how these time poems work now here we're going to go to the just the, the bare outline of it okay this is just introduction Okay, that's just, he's telling you that, you know, it's, it's the year that uh, Darius the Mede had died. Cyrus had taken over. So, um, we're, you're looking at 538 B.C. at this point. I'm sorry, um, not Darius the Mede had not died. He just took over on behalf of Cyrus the Great. This is 538 B.C. All right, it's really important. It's the month of Bull, it's, which is equ equivalent to, like, you know, November. And so it's the end of 538 B.C. That's real important. Daniel tells you, just, I haven't covered that in these time poems, but each time poem tells you, the author of it tells you exactly when he's writing. It's the first paragraph that's divisible by seven in the meter. That's how come you can know exactly. Moses tells you, that's why I could tell you when it was written. The same thing true with Isaiah, that's why I can tell you it was 714, 712 BC, when Isaiah 53, 1 is penned. And the same thing with Daniel. He's telling you it was done at the end of uh, 538. And that document in the video description will show you how you know. Because this is a very sophisticated time poem. Okay, so the time poem itself starts right here, okay? And it goes all the way down to verse 19, all right? I can't show it all on screen, unfortunately, without shrinking the text too small for you to see. So you're going to have to, like, do this. This is his dateline. He's telling you that he's writing, okay? Um you know, in 538 BC, essentially. The, the document will give you the whole specifics about how you can tell. It shows the Hebrew, it shows the meter, and it shows syllable by syllable what kings are being discussed. Daniel starts back at um, David, just like Isaiah had done. He's keying off Isaiah and Psalm 90 at the same time in alternate meter. He's developing two time tracks to track the both of them, and his whole time poem is 742 syllables because there's 750 sevens in a 52-50 time period. In other words, you know, M Moses in Psalm 90, 5250 years, that's the whole period of history that was scheduled. So Daniel's playing off Moses that way, but he's making 750 sevens, but he leaves the last 56 years out on purpose because those are the years that Moses had left off, the 56 at the end of Psalm 90. Daniel's repeating that to show that the time critical history isn't going to complete because the temple's down when he prays. He's praying for it to come up again and for that 56 to be completed. So he leaves it out of his prayer because God could say no. All right? Even though he knows God is going to say yes. So he starts here with David's Hebron kingship. And every syllable per year is about that 
time. In Hebrew, this is 40 syllables. Da um, David is the only king in this roster of kings that's taking, going all the way from David to the end. This is the only verse, the only segment that is specific to one king. Now what's really important about that is when you start bundling kings together, it means that none of them are faithful on their own. Okay? I mean, it's really sophisticated. It's going to be really hard for me to, to get very specific about the English. You really need to read the document and see how he does this. Okay? It's very important. But this part I wanted to, to explain. This is David's reign. Forty years. Okay? From the time that he becomes king in Hebron to the time he retires, not dies, retires at age 70. Solomon takes over and the last seven years of David's life were spent on the temple, which is told to you in what a book that's contemporary to Daniel by Jeremiah called Chronicles. Jeremiah wrote Chronicles and he's making a commentary on the book of Kings that became part of scripture. And Daniel, uh, David's last seven years after he retired from kingship are recorded in 1 Chronicles 22 and following. And that's paralleled in 1 Kings 1, 1 through um, 2.39, which is the third year after David's death, when Shimei was executed. Okay, so David, that was what happened to David, and Daniel's going to track every single king syllable by year in the Hebrew and that's why this text seems so repetitive we didn't obey we didn't obey we didn't obey but the individual words slightly change to suit the particular king in question and and Daniel changes his meter based on when the king went good or when he turned bad and I cross-referenced each syllable to the Bible verses in question so you could follow what Daniel's saying. It, the satire is unbelievable. And that's really important because Paul's going to ape Daniel's style. He's going through the whole chronology of the kings just like Isaiah had done, except when Daniel's doing it, he's doing it through the past. Isaiah's doing it through the future. Daniel's doing it through a past because what is he doing? He's setting up the indictment. This is the basis for his petition right here. We're wrong. We have not sought your favor. He's full circle at his own captivity at this point. He's operating on two time tracks, one based on Isaiah, one based on the raw history of his own captivity. He starts saying, hi, I'm praying to you in the 70th year of my captivity. And then he comes full circle to his own captivity here. This is his summation of the case because he's a lawyer. All right. And then this is this is all the legal basis for the petition. All right. Through here. And then he's giving his petition through verse 19. Okay. This is where he ends it. At this point, at that point, it's 742 syllables in the Hebrew. It took me months to parse this out. Okay, he's going forward in time to the millennium just like Moses did. And he's basically using a forward millennial accounting, basically saying that, you know, you promised us all those years that Isaiah put an ellipsis with the 364 to Messiah's death and then the millennium afterwards and I'm claiming the promise. That's what he's doing in verses 15 through 19. He's turning his face to the future. And then he leaves the last 56 syllables out because it ends at 742 syllables instead of 750. See, because there's sevens. 742 sevens, 750 sevens equals 52, 50 years. He's leaving that extra 56 syllables out just like to, to create a sort of hanging chad like Moses had done. Like Isaiah stressed with the 256s, okay, he's doing the same thing because God can say no to his prayer. He's asking God to complete the 56 because, see, he's praying in the 49th year of the captivity. He's praying in the 70th year of his own captivity 
See, 49 years from the time the temple went down. 70 years from the time he was captured back in 607 BC, just before Nebuchadnezzar became king. And so now he's saying, okay, well, there's 56 years to run on the clock because we're in the 49th year and there's seven more years due on the 49 lapsed sabbatical years. And that extra seven can't be made up, so we still got another 56 to deal with. Do you want to complete it? That's why God replies the way he does in Daniel 9, um, 26, with 49 years. When he says 70 weeks, see? Where is it? See? That's 49 years. It's a reimbursement of the 49 elapsed years from the time that Daniel's praying. And then the 62 weeks is 434 years, which is the 364 years in Isaiah, plus an extra 70 years because of the promise in Jeremiah, which prompted Daniel's prayer in Daniel 9-2. The 70 years that God had promised in Jeremiah 25 and 29, that's getting reimbursed. So this whole timeline the decree to, re, to, to restore is God's decree in Jeremiah 25. God's decree right up here. It's not a human king. It's not Darius or Artaxerxes or the king under whom Nehemiah was serving. It's God, God the king. God the king who, put, who said the 70 year decree in Jeremiah 25 and 29. God the King who just issues the decree right here and says, you don't know, from the issuing of the decree. Whose decree? God's decree. Where did he put the decree? Well, right here and prior, 70 years prior, in Jeremiah 25 and 29. So he's saying, okay, when the 70 years are up, which is going to be 516 BC from 586, you count, you count the 70 from 586. Then there's another 70 years. And this seven weeks begins 140 years after the 586. And then the 62 weeks takes you to the completion of Canon Malachi. Okay? And then, you know, also takes you to the birth of Christ. The birth and the death of Christ. But it's in the 62nd week that Christ has to die. But he doesn't die the 62nd week. He dies the 61st week. Okay? And that's why you have the 14 shortage, because he's dying the 61st week, really dies, but he's allotted to live till age 40 and die in the 62nd week, which doesn't end up happening. Then in between this verse and this verse, remember I said 1050? There was the 50-year voting period for the unbelievers, 50-year voting period for the Gentiles. It was 50 years between this verse and this verse that were supposed to transpire. The last 57 years of history, which is composed of the 54 years that are owed from Abraham maturing too early in 2046 from Adam versus the first 2100 that were owed to Goyim. And then the extra three and a half years, that's our time overlap that I'll get back to show you that resolves our BCAD problem where we have the same overlap. Because Messiah ends up having to be born three years early because David died three years before the temple was constructed. The temple construction began late. So that's how 54 turns into 57, which is one week plus the unmentioned, because it doesn't belong to Israel, the unmentioned 50 years between this verse and this verse. That was the harvesting the Gentiles. It was represented in the law by Pentecost, and it was represented in the law by Jubilee. It was the last 50 years of history. Okay, and the last seven is tacked onto it and really is the very last seven years that plays before Christ returns. That was the timeline Israel knew. That was the timeline we should know, but don't, because we don't do our math right. We, we think that it's a human king, okay, that's talking, that, that some human king had to issue a decree. We're forgetting that God just was talking as the king here. And we're using lunar years to do all this. 
So we miss the hanging chat of the extra seven, and then we don't realize that Christ died seven years earlier than scheduled. Because we also screw up Daniel's, uh, David's age at death. So you see, all this fits together, and, Dave, and Daniel knows it. So that's why when he gets to this end here, his prayer is 742 syllables at the end of verse 19. And he has, con he has covered all of history all the way to the millennium because he does millennial year accounting just like Moses did. Okay, and he's playing back from Isaiah because Isaiah had picked up at David. So at David's Hebron kingship, skipping over, you know, the first 30 years, is where Daniel picks up and he covers the whole 40 years of the kingship. Okay. And then he goes king by year by year all the way through and he finishes off the kings there. Actually kind of finishes them off here, but there's a sort of extra, you know, internal, what do you want to call it, transition phrase there. And then he begins his petition and all of this is future to the millennium accounting. He's using that as the basis for his petition. The high God, you promised us extra time, and we don't deserve it, but you do. It's your promise to Messiah. Please rebuild the temple so Messiah can come on time. That's basically what he's doing with this meter. But of course, if you don't know the Hebrew, this just looks like all very repetitive text. We've sinned, we've sinned, we've sinned, we've sinned. And what you don't know is that he's bringing a litany of each king's history of rejecting God. See, our kings, our princes, our fathers, that's very wry when you know that he's talking about specific kings starting with David. And only David is allotted his full time in one verse. Everybody else is all lumped together with the verses changing at turning points. When they turn good, when they turn bad, and each one of these words is wry wordplay on the king in question. It's just awesome. So I would suggest that if you're interested that you read the the Daniel document that's in the video description. So basically Daniel Daniel's theme is from David to millennium. So he picks up where Isaiah leaves off or not leaves off but he picks up at Isaiah plus 20 years and then he goes all the way to the millennium with 742, seven, 742 syllables, literally. And then the last 56, he's leaving in advance because he's waiting for God to answer. So now you know what the 56 is in Paul. And actually, between Daniel and Paul is Mary. And that's where we'll pick up in the next.